Thank you so much for having me today. This is a great turnout. Um, so, as she mentioned, I'm from Giant Food. I'm one of the in-store nutritionists. And out of curiosity, how many of you guys knew that Giant had an in-store nutritionist? Not many of you. Well, it's definitely a great service, and we're actually expanding um, for a health and wellness initiative. So I'm actually going to be based out of the Gaithersburg Giants in that district, but Ms. Lisa Coleman is the registered dietitian that's here in the Timonium area. So she's actually located in the Giant across from the fairgrounds, I believe. So if you are interested or you want to seek out her services, you're more than welcome to go to okay, her store. Are they they are not offered in all the stores, but hopefully one day, that's the goal, to kind of get nutrition you know, up and coming in most of the giant stores. But you can find her in the um, shopping aisles. You can ask her nutrition questions. We're also out in the community doing presentations such as these. So our goal is to help people eat healthier and just help you navigate the aisles. Because I think sometimes it can get kind of confusing you know, to kind of keep on track of the new um, up and coming nutrition trends and things like that. Okay. So I'm glad you guys called me to come in today. We're going to be talking a little bit about some practical tips that we can do at home to stay healthy. We're going to touch on six practical things that you can start doing right away. And I think I um, heard you guys mention you're doing like a fruit and vegetable challenge. Is that right? You're doing some kind of initiative at, at work here? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we'll do a little bit of a um, focus on fruits and vegetables during the presentation. and. I like this to be interactive. If you guys have questions during the presentation, just raise your hand and I can come on over and we can talk in the mic so everybody else can hear. So on the menu for today, so we're going to be talking about the practical steps for a healthier diet and then foods with staying power. So what I mean by staying power is foods that are going to satiate us, right, help us keep full. Because I think sometimes when people think of a healthy diet, we might think that Maybe it's not me being full enough, or I'm just going to eat salad greens and that's it, right? But we, we're going to talk a little bit about some practical things that you can do that will still help keep you satisfied. So I want to start off with um, a study that was kind of interesting. It was a study out of the Michigan State University, and they explored what percent of Americans maintain a healthy lifestyle. And they defined a healthy lifestyle as this, those who do not smoke, those who maintain a healthy weight and a BMI, those who eat a minimum of five fruits and vegetables a day, and those that exercise at least five times per week. What percentage of Americans do you think fit that guideline? Seven. Five. five. You all are pretty much around that ballpark, so about 3%. Only 3%. Can you believe? Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I hear it all the time. People tell me I don't have enough time, right? Or I'm tired. So, I mean, who has stress out there? Who feels stressed? I do, right? Workplace, family, friends, whatever the case may be. But believe it or not, our lifestyle, how we eat, can really make a difference in how we feel, right? So our diet, it plays a huge role in preventing fatigue, high and low blood sugar, moodiness, right, digestive problems. So all of these can really play an important role in how we feel in the long run, okay? So before you switch the slide, um, I want to ask you guys a question. So when I say real food, what do you guys think of when I say real food? What comes to mind? We hear steak, not processed. What else do you think of when I say real food? Natural. <laughs> Cheese steak subs, okay. So I'm hearing a little bit of everything. So with real food, what I mean by that is food that is not processed, right? So I like to call it, if it doesn't have a label, a nutrition facts label, it's probably a lot better for you, right? So build your diet around things like fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, beans, whole grains, right? Our lean meats, fish, low-fat dairy, and all of our minimally processed foods. What do you consider lean meat? What do I consider lean meat? So lean meat can be like chicken breast. Okay, if you're looking at the aisle in the aisles in the meat section, 99% lean, okay? Things like that. Pork chops. Yes. So, yes. So basically lean cuts would be lower in the saturated fat and lower in cholesterol, okay? So with real food, and I, and I like that you brought up processed food because a lot of times if we become accustomed to eating processed foods, our palate actually changes. We start to crave those type of processed foods. 
But once we eliminate them from the diet, we don't really begin to crave them as much anymore. So there was actually another study done with a participant who was used to eating strawberry ice cream. She loved the flavor, right? But they did a study where they removed the strawberry ice cream and substituted just fresh strawberries instead. And natural, the natural sugars and fruit, as you know, are also sweet. So she got accustomed to eating the fresh strawberries. When she went back to the strawberry ice cream, she didn't even like it anymore. It was too sweet. Okay, so again, nothing happens overnight. Things have to take some time to change on our diet. Everything we're eating is a lifestyle. But if there's goals that you want to meet, you can certainly do them, but it's going to take a little bit of time. Okay, and again, if you're motivated too, and we're going to talk about some things you can do about that. Now, I don't, I see some of you have pen and papers, but I thought it would be kind of nice to kind of think about or write down everything that you ate yesterday. Or think about it just for a second or a couple minutes. Think about it, because what good is it to make a change if you don't know what your starting point is, right? So think about for a couple minutes everything you ate and everything you drank yesterday. What does that look like? How are you feeling when you were eating those things or drinking those things? Were you bored? Were you stressed? Were you tired? Were you actually hungry? Okay, so this is what I want you guys to start getting in the habit of thinking about, because a lot of times you may eat just because, you know, of, of who's around us, if we're not feeling right. So think about that for a second, and then at the end, I'm going to ask you, what can you do about what your diet is like now? What can you do to make it better? So I'll give you a couple seconds to think about that. How many servings of fruits and vegetables do you think we should be eating each day? It's actually 9 to 11 servings, okay? And I want to focus on this side here. Have you guys seen the my plate? Does this image look familiar to you? Have you seen it before? So this one gives us a pretty general idea of how many or what types of foods we should be eating in our diet each day. So as you can see, half of the plate is fruits and vegetables. So what that means is that with all of your meals, try to aim for getting some kind of a veggie and a fruit. So right now it's four o'clock. How many of you have had any fruits and vegetables today? That's awesome. Okay, that's great. Have you had your five or more servings yet? That's a good question. So the question is, what is a serving size? So think about a, an apple size of a, a, about the size of a baseball. That's about a serving of fruit. Or um, if you're doing a salad, one cup of salad greens is considered one serving. So if you do a big salad, you can get several servings in just like that during lunchtime. So when we're looking at this or thinking about how we can get all these food groups in to our daily you know, lunch, dinner, or breakfast, think about how can I start getting in my fruit and vegetables from the, the, beginning, the beginning of the day when you wake up, okay? So for breakfast, what do you think are some ways you can incorporate fruits or vegetables into your breakfast? I heard someone say something. A smoothie. You could do a smoothie. I personally don't always like to drink all my calories. I want to enjoy it, right, and savor it. So you could put berries on top of your oatmeal. I know of some other. What about vegetables? How can we incorporate those in? Put them in an omelet. Yeah. So when you're making your omelet with your, your eggs, you can stick in some tomatoes, spinach, kale, peppers. Okay, so that's another easy way you can do that. All right, so start getting in the habit of thinking about how we can do it. So we're going to talk about fruits and vegetables first. Then we're going to move on to the whole grains and the protein. All right, so half your plate, veggies. We want you to eat the rainbow, right? Have you heard the more colors that are in your meal and from fruits and vegetables, the more important nutrients you're getting in, okay? So red, blues, oranges, they all deliver some kind of an important antioxidant. Fruits and vegetables are going to be high in fiber, okay? They give you that feeling of um, uh, uh, fullness. So we don't really want to go too much towards these fruit juices, right? Because they mainly just sweet. You're not getting any of that fiber or for the, the benefit from the skin of the fruit, okay? And I don't care if you get them from canned, frozen. This doesn't matter, but just keep in mind, if you're doing these canned type of um, fruits, buy the ones that are um, not in the fruit juice or the concentrate. It's like a, like a syrup. Right, so you want to kind of buy them in the water or like a lower sugar kind. But any of that is fine. And actually frozen is great because if you're the type of person where you're not really sure what time of the day you're going to get around to it, you feel like it's going to spoil, frozen fruits are actually flash frozen at their peak so they actually retain more nutrients. Okay, so that's another thing you can do. 
All right. And at the end of today's uh, little presentation here, I'm actually going to give you all a little taste of a really delicious salad I put together. So everyone's going to get a little feel for what they can maybe try at home later on. Whole grains. So how many of you have heard about whole grains being more important than your white breads, white pastas, and all that? Do you remember that plate I showed you a couple slides ago? Do you remember that section where it said grains? We want to try to focus on getting at least half of all the kinds of grains we eat throughout the day coming from a whole grain, okay? So a whole grain is considered something that's 100% whole wheat. So just because the packaging is brown, don't be fooled by that. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's a whole grain product. You have to read the ingredient list, okay? That's another thing I want you guys to get in the habit of. How many of you read Nutrition Facts labels? How many of you know what they actually mean when you read it? <laughs> Less hands went up. Okay, it can be confusing, but if you're looking at the ingredient list, everything listed on there is actually in order of <clears throat> volume. Okay, so the first ingredient on there is what's going to be the highest amount of product in that food. Okay, so if you're looking at a, um, a loaf of bread, let's say, 100% whole wheat should be the first ingredient on the list. All right, another thing that can be helpful is if you guys look for this stamp. It says whole grain. That is also going to signify that it's a whole grain product. But this is how manufacturing companies can sometimes get you. They might just make the label brown and say made with whole grains, but it may not be the first ingredient on the list. All right. So if you're new to eating whole grain products and it's kind of difficult for you to get in the habit of eating more, just start off by just cutting out half of all the white, white pastas, white rice, and add whole grain that way to kind of get yourself accustomed to the taste. Another suggestion I would say is if you absolutely hate brown rice, but you don't mind the taste of maybe whole wheat pasta because you're going to put a little bit of pasta sauce on there. Maybe have the pasta, the whole grain pasta, start off with. Or you could do the opposite. Or some people have told me that they mix the white rice and the brown rice together. Or the same with the pasta. You can do that. So it's, everyone needs a starting point somewhere. Nothing has changed overnight. Okay. And there's a lot of different whole grains out there. There's also these ancient grains. Have you guys heard about quinoa? You heard about that? Okay. So quinoa is actually a great one because it also ha is high in protein, okay? And that's more filling than if we're just doing something that doesn't have protein. And we're going to spend some time on protein in a second. The question is, is the whole wheat better because it will prevent the spike in the blood sugar? Yes. Yeah. So with whole grain products, because they contain fiber, they whole grains, basically, you have the whole grain intact, right? So you have the bran the germ, and the endosperm. So the bran and the germ are what contain most of the nutrients, right? So when you have a product that's been, you know, these parts have been taken away, then you have the white rice or the white bread, okay? So what companies will do, they'll remove the germ, they'll remove the bran, and all you're left with is the interior portion, and then they're adding back the nutrients. So that's why we say keep with the whole grain because that part is still intact, okay? So, and because of the fiber, that's what blunts that spike in the blood sugar. And the fiber will also help keep you full for a lot longer versus the products like the white breads don't have very much fiber, so you may become hungry a little bit quicker. These are all, they're all types of whole, types of whole grains. So some come in the form of seeds, um, things like millet. The quinoa is essentially also a seed, but they put it in that grain category. There's very many of them out there. We've been talking about protein a lot. So protein is so essential because it's, Again, important in helping to repair our muscles. It keeps us satiated, keeps us full, gives us energy. So we want to try to include protein with each meal, okay? So some types of protein um, examples I have are listed here. So lean meats, we mentioned that earlier. Poultry, things like eggs, you can do fish. Salmon especially is really great because it's high in omega-3s. And okay, these are some healthy fats. Greek yogurt, do, have you guys tried Greek yogurt? Do, what do you guys think about it? Because I, I hear, like, some people like it, some people don't like it. Yeah. It's, it's yeah, so the taste might be sour for some, but it's also really thick. Um, so it adds a little bit more staying power, I think, but they're very high in protein. In fact, I think one six ounce has close to about 15 grams of protein or so in just one of those. Um, you could do things like vegetables with hummus. So, you know, just veggies by itself. Again, they're nutritious, but the hummus will add a little bit more staying power. Almonds, cashews. Now, um, actually, with Giant, we came out with their brand new line of our Nature's Promise. We have things like cashew butter or sunflower seed butter. 
So, so an almond butter. So some people, again, if they have a fear of these allergies where they can't tolerate peanuts, there is plenty of other alternatives out there as well. So that's another thing that we do offer. So again, trying to be mindful, thinking about how can I add a snack that's going to take me a little bit longer through the day, I would consider adding a protein choice to that. So a good snack, what do you think a good snack might be? Something that has protein, something to munch on in between, between shifts. Celery. Yeah, you could do that. Do you, do you guys snack on something now maybe that you want to share that could be possibly healthy? Bacon. Bacon. <laughs> Bacon. <laughs> You could do nut butters with, you know, a fruit as an example. Some people, a lot of you actually raised your hand and said you like Greek yogurt. You can certainly do a Greek yogurt with some berries on top, for instance. Berries are actually in season right now, too, so they're very sweet. So you can do that. That's a good question. So is natural peanut butter better than the, the other peanut butter? So certain peanut butters, you got to read the label. They might have added sugars to them. Right. So the natural peanut butters typically won't have a lot of extra additives. So yes, reading the ingredient list is definitely important. I wanted to spend a couple seconds talking about beverages, because if you remember from the beginning, I was saying I don't really like to drink my calories. And a lot of times, if you are you know, wondering how can I maybe lose a little, a little bit of weight or where are some of these extra pounds coming from? Rethink some of the drinks that are in your diet because these beverages can add a lot of extra calories without you even knowing it. So take this example. A 20 ounce soda has around 16 to 18 teaspoons of sugar. Do you guys know that? So here's, here's something you can do when you go home. If you've got a bottle of soda laying around, or if someone has a bottle of soda today and you want to just look at the label, you want to look at how many servings. First, look at the serving size on the, on the um, label. A lot of times, a 20 ounce is actually for two, or might say one and a half servings, right? So that means you've got to double whatever is on that label by two, okay? So whenever you get, if someone has that, they can look at it, okay? And this is not to put anybody on the spot or anything. It's a learning experience, right? So you can look at the serving size, double it, and that'll tell you how many total grams of sugar are in there, okay? And then to go the extra step to figure out how many teaspoons of sugar, divide the total amount of sugar by four. Always divide the total number of sugar by four, and you get the number of teaspoons. With diet soda, is it any better? Probably not. I, I like to put them in the category of sometimes foods, okay? Because nobody's perfect, right? We want to, and foods are delicious, sodas are great. You, you want to have them for a snack or when you're going to a birthday party, but not every day, okay? So I categorize things as everyday foods, sometimes foods, and that's it, okay? So probably not a good idea to do something that has this many teaspoons of sugar every day. So instead, what you can do is you can do things like flavored water. Have you guys tried flavored water before? Yeah? Did you guys like it? Did you make it yourself at home? Or what did you, what did you add in the flavored water? Just out of curiosity. I always like to get ideas. <laughs> what did he say? <laughs> I love the vibe. So with flavored water, um, so sometimes it's difficult for me to just drink plain water. I needed to have some kind of flavor, right? So what works for me is I've tried something that's very easy to remember, the LOL blend, right? You could take some lemon, orange, and lime slices and put them in like a big pitcher with some ice and let it sit overnight. And those flavors are just awesome, you know? Sometimes you just need that little extra flavor to get yourself to just, you know, drink a little bit more water. But staying hydrated is so important. Our bodies are made up of mostly water, so we want to make sure we're hydrating, drinking plenty of water throughout the day, and limiting the extra sugar, okay? And the sugar additives that can come from a lot of these, um, you know, diet drinks. Last but not least, when we're thinking about foods, we want to enjoy the food, right? So how many of times have you guys gone into your fridge, you see a stale slice of cake, and you eat it anyway? Like you're not even enjoying it. Has that happened to has that happened to you guys? You've like had something in the fridge. It's not even that good, but you just end up eating it. Sometimes we do that. We're not we just mindlessly eat. We're not thinking about what we're putting into our mouth. So I want you guys to remember, you know, with foods, when we're enjoying a meal, a lot of times the banquet is in the first bite. 
we really get the satisfaction from first, those first couple of bites. We don't want to shovel that food in, right? We want to enjoy it. So take the time during your next meal to really savor each bite. Think about what you're eating. That's why we tend to say try to sit down when you're eating versus, you know, doing a bunch of other things at the same time, right? So if you don't love it, don't eat it. Savor it, okay? I want you guys to think about what we talked about today. And now I'm going to ask you, based on those foods you were thinking about that you ate yesterday, the drinks you had yesterday, what can you do to be better? What can you do to maybe motivate yourself? What can you cut back on? What can you add? You all thinking about that? And you don't have to tell me, but if you want to share, does anyone want to share maybe what they personally would like to change after this class? Did you get inspired? So from a cost-effective point of view, do we feel that fruits and vegetables are more expensive than processed foods? Does everyone kind of feel that way? Yeah? You know, and you said organic. Organic is more of, you know, like a personal choice. You don't have to buy everything organic. I mean, if you look into, there is um, the Dirty Dozen. Have you guys heard of that? There's a dozen of these fruits and vegetables that are known to be, you know, more or have a higher pesticide content. So you can look into that. But you certainly don't have to buy everything organic. Um, and actually today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make this salad. It's from Nature's Promise from Giant. So this is an organic product. Um, but they also have, you know, other products that are not necessarily organic, but they're free from any pesticides and, you know, other additives in there. But you don't have to buy organic, but I think the simple fact is if you're not eating enough fruits and vegetables to begin with, you're probably going to, it's not going to harm you if you add a couple more extra fruits and vegetables, you know. It's a personal choice. It's a personal choice. Um, the way I see it is, is it worth, you know, getting ill over? You know, you want to, you want to, be as healthy as you can be now, yeah. incorporate farmers more. Farmer's markets, markets, you can certainly do that. And I don't know if most people know this, but one of the brands that we carry in Giant, it's Bright Farms. And it's um, considered fresh because they deliver the product within 24 hours. It comes from Culpeper, Virginia. So the flavor profile is just out of this world. It's amazing because it's coming just within 24 hours. Okay, a lot of other products sometimes may sit on the shelf. It might take a lot, little bit longer to get to the, the store. So you're not having that same flavor profile there. So that's something you guys can also look for in the store is Bright Farms. And they're really not that much more expensive, okay, especially if you're making a big salad big salad is more filling, depending on what you add in it. Okay, so I ask you, what can you do now to be a three percenter? What can you do, remember, that three percent of what American lifestyle is, what can you do personally when you go back home? Think about what you can do to better your health, your diet, even if it's just by swapping out the sodas for flavored water. Even if it's maybe adding a little bit more whole grains into your diet. You may still do white bread every now and then, but maybe you switch to whole grain pasta, and that's, that's something good. Okay, so start thinking about what you can do after today, and hopefully you can incorporate a little bit more healthy, healthy tips and practical um, uh, swaps in your, in your diet. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do a little demo, and uh, when I was you know, planning to come here, they told me only 20 people would be here, so I feel kind of bad. So I'm going to do the best that I can. And does anybody have any allergies here? Any food allergies? No? No, no al nuts, no allergies to fruits? No. Okay. So what I have for you guys today is a berry avocado and kale salad with a honey lime dressing. It's husband approved, okay? He tried it and he thought it was amazing. So all of you are going to get this recipe. I printed out 25, so if you guys have a copier and you really love it, you can make a copy and take it home, okay? So it's really simple. Let's see. How many of you guys have tried kale before? Awesome. <laughs> you know, I'm really impressed with this group. You guys have really tried a lot of good things. Well, today is your lucky day. You're going to try some kale today. So for those of you who raise your hand, the ones, 
you guys who tried kale, what what kind of kale did you try? The one that comes in the stem, like the bunch? Yeah. Did you? How did you prepare it? Uh, it sliced, thin sliced in a salad. In a salad? And okay. I don't you didn't care for it too much? No. The reason, was it the flavor? Was it not? It was, it was tough. That's that's what I wanted to get at. So if you're buying kale from the stem, it can be a little bit more tough, right? So what we recommend that you do is, you know, you rip it off the stem, put it in, cut it into bite-sized pieces, and you put it into a bowl, and you want to massage it with olive oil, okay? Because what that does is it actually helps to soften those leaves a little bit, so it's not as um, as rough to the taste. What I have here is baby kale, so it's not going to be as rough, okay? I could certainly have brought that one too, and I would have massaged and everything, but it's, you know, take a little bit of time. This salad is super easy, so all it has is the baby kale. We're adding some almonds, sliced almonds. You can toast them. That kind of brings out some of the flavor a little bit. These are not toasted. Um, I have fresh blueberries, so I just bought one container of blueberries, one container of fresh raspberries. I have an avocado here. You peel, core, and you dice it. And I also have some feta cheese. I'm not going to add the feta cheese. I know some people are particular about the flavor, but if you want some, I have it up here. Does everybody mind if it's on the salad, or would you rather I not put it on there? No. Don't put it on there. Okay, that's why I asked. <laughs> yeah, that's totally fine. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for inviting me.